everyone and welcome back to another virtual Bethabara field trip. Today we'll be talking about how the Moravians dealt with marriage. Most Moravian marriages were not love matches. Instead, they often happened to meet the needs of the community. For example, men who held certain positions, such as minister, doctor, or tavern keeper, were required to be married by the church elders. Doctors were required to be married because they often saw unmarried female patients. An unmarried doctor examining an unmarried female patient was unseemly in the church. His wife also typically served as the town's midwife. Similarly, it would be unseemly for an unmarried tavern keeper to tend to female guests. In the instance of the minister, his wife often assisted him during services. Regardless of their position in town, everyone went through a specific process in order to find a partner. As you might know, Moravians were separated into groups based on their gender, age, and marital status. These groups were called choirs and included units for boys, girls, single men, single women, married men, married women, widows, and widowers. Some of these choirs lived together, especially single men and women. Each choir had a spiritual counselor known as the choir helper. When a single brother reached a certain age and wanted to be considered for marriage, he would let his choir helper know. The choir helper would then assess whether or not they felt that the single brother was ready for marriage. For example, the choir helper for single brothers would take into consideration the brother's disposition, bodily constitution, occupation, family, external circumstances, and whether he will have something in hand at the beginning. It was very important that single brothers have a way to support their new families if they were married. If the choir helper decided that the brother was ready for marriage, he would then begin a discussion with the leadership in the single sister's house. The single sister's choir helper might suggest certain sisters she felt were ready for matrimony, and the leaders would decide whether or not the two would make a good pair. If the single brother had a particular single sister in mind, he could voice that preference and it would be taken into consideration. Once all agreed on a couple that would make a good match, a proposal would be put before the church elders. The church elders would then consult the lot. You might remember that Diana discussed the lot in the Bethabara to Salem virtual field trip. The elders would ask the Lord if he felt that the single brother and single sister should be joined in matrimony. If the answer was yes, the single sister would then be asked if she would be interested in marrying the single brother. Both parties always had the right to refuse, and sometimes this did happen. If the answer was no, the single brother would then need to make another suggestion, or the choir helpers would need to choose a second potential bride. One example of a rejection was recorded in the Salem Board Minutes of 1787. It was asked of the lot, does the Savior approve that we try to arrange a marriage between the single brother, Johann Heinrich Wernley, and the single sister, Maria Pfizer? The answer was yes. The next week, it was recorded, Maria Pfizer declines to marry Johann Heinrich Wernley. As for poor brother Wernley, he was betrothed to sister Anna Shore just a month later. There's also one recorded instance of a Salem couple being secretly engaged in 1803. This situation happened when a single brother, listed as JCF, wanted to marry the secretly engaged single sister, listed as SL. It soon came to light that SL had been secretly engaged for nearly a year. The couple was given two options. If they freed themselves of each other and asked for forgiveness, they would be allowed to remain in the congregation. However, one of them would have to be transferred to another congregation in Pennsylvania. If they wished to remain together and marry each other, they would both have to leave the town. The couple chose to stay together, and then they were asked to leave the town and the congregation. The lot was used until 1818 to determine marriages. Many people in the congregation were becoming upset that they couldn't get married for love and began to leave the church. Therefore, the decision was made to stop using the lot in this manner. It was typical for multiple couples to be married in the same ceremony. Weddings did not place emphasis on an individual couple, but rather on the meaning and importance of marriage in the community. Ceremonies for a large number of couples often occurred before a journey, such as when the Moravians left Europe for America. The first wedding ceremony in Bethabara took place on July 18, 1762, when seven couples were married. Afterwards, it was celebrated with a love feast, which we'll talk about in a future episode. Thank you for joining us for another virtual Bethabara field trip. We hope you'll come back next week for another one. Thank you.